the Mystery of Marriage series, now on Fixing the Money Thing. Communication is so crucial to your relationship. And so I want to cover a few of the things that we do that are, we learned in the earth curse that are not good. Okay, one of them is to surrender. You just go along with whatever the person says. If they say, where do you want to go to eat? You say, I don't care. It's okay, whatever you want. And then they say Chinese and you go, well, maybe not that. And then they say, well, Italian, well, maybe not that. How many of you gals do that, guys do that? You just want to get along. You don't want any conflict. Yeah. A lot of times we learned this when we first got married because we thought if we just say whatever Whatever they want, whatever they want. And we truly meant it in the early days. But then as we get longer in, in the relationship, we're like, why does he always go where he wants to eat? Why does he go where I want? Because maybe you didn't communicate it. See, women have this uh, ability, this language. We can uh, read each other's hints. Two women can finish each other's sentences. We read between the lines. We understand in meanings and depths and tones and all these uh, body language. We're hearing all of those perceptions are coming in and we're forming how we believe about about something, guys are just like, please just tell me what you want because they're not reading all of those things that you're reading. And so ladies, let me just give you a hint. If you want something, express what you want, then he can do what you want and you'll both be at peace. So don't just surrender or expect them to figure out what it is you want. Now I do know ladies, you want to be studied and you want him to remember all the things about you and to understand all the facets about you. But sometimes our expectations are really, really too high. So we just need to to say what we need and what we want. But guys can also surrender. They cannot share their feelings effectively either. They can just say, yes, whatever, that's fine, that's fine, and not really share. And when you don't do that, what it does is it causes you to harbor resentment eventually because there's internal conflict. You're wishing they did what you wanted, but you're not saying what you want. And let me just tell you, it's like a volcano. You can keep pushing down, pushing down. Eventually, the heat is gonna heat up enough where it is gonna spew, right? And sometimes that happens once a month at PMS, right? That's the, that's the indicator that you probably have not been communicating. It is like the clear all the vent. And so then you go, what happened? What did I do? It's what you didn't do the whole month long. And now her hormones are at a level that she's going to tell you about it. So I'm just telling you how it is. You can say, well, that's not right, Drina. That's not correct. It's just the way it is. We can talk about it uh, or we can decide not to talk about it. Either way, it's going to cause resentment in the other person if you bury your feelings and eventually it's going to come out. Eventually it's going to make both persons keep from growing. Yeah. So what if your spouse is a fighter? What if they're the person that's always got to have their way and to them every situation is a conflict they have to win. If you surrender all the time, you're not causing them to grow. You're just appeasing them all the time. You may be appeasing strife for a moment, but eventually it's going to create strife. We've been in marriage uh, counseling 25 years. We've ministered. We've been in marriage counseling, and we've seen all kinds of situations. Yep. Sometimes they're so nerve-wracking, we just want to go home and hold hands and shake together. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we've been in situations where the guy was demanding and a fighter, and he was like, well, you know, he's bought boats and cars and all these things, and she's working three jobs to try to pay for them. And in the, in the meeting, we're having this conversation, and he says, well, at least I'm not in an affair with another woman. And, you know, at least that's, and he acts like that's a consolation. And Gary, I remember one time, we have a little communication going on between us, and Gary just made a J underneath the table to me when he said that. And he didn't have to tell me I knew what he meant. He meant this guy's a jerk. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he, he wanted to protect our relationship. Like, I want you to know, I don't agree with this guy. I don't agree with what that's he's right. saying. Don't take it out on me. <laughs> so anyway, we have to be wise to each other and understanding of each other try yeah. to make the effort to hear from the other person. And ultimately, we want to become like Jesus. And nobody grows if we don't communicate. And so just as surrender is not the way. Well, here's another way people communicate. They withdraw. Oftentimes, this will be the guy. You know, uh, Gary said this is how he handled a lot of times conflict. Because a guy withdraws because he doesn't, he doesn't want to get into a fight. He doesn't want to get into an escalated argument. And also, sometimes he thinks there's no point. She's got more words. She's got more ammo than me. Gary used to say to me, Drenna, yeah. when we get into a conversation, I can't win. You have so many more words and so many different meanings, and you will go keep going at it. And I just feel like I have to surrender anyway. So he just would withdraw from the conversation, which to me was a communication that you don't love me, you don't care about me. And like you said, my voice would get stronger. I get more upset maybe cry or slam a door, or whatever. A woman's trying to get your attention and say, talk to me, I need you to talk. 
And so Gary's right about stay with it because you love it. Uh, you love the person enough. So we can pull away. We can shut down. We can give them the silent treatment. And women can do this as well. It's not always the man or the woman. These, these are generalizations, but typically a woman will, will uh, be the one that will try to be more verbal, but sometimes she won't communicate either and won't speak words. Let me just tell you what happens. When you withdraw from conflict and you refuse to communicate, you shut down, you are harboring resentment. You can feel self-righteous. And let me, let me say, there is a conversation going on. Whether they're having it with you, they're having it in their head. They may not be talking to you, but they are saying, what is wrong with her? Why is, she, or why is he always doing this? And, and then there's this self-righteous attitude and this inner resentment, this inner victimization. You start to feel like a victim and she's always after me and you justify that you're not conversing with her and you're gonna punish him or you're gonna punish her with silent treatment. The other party feels insecure when you do this. They feel rejected. They feel abandoned. They feel alone, controlled, and they can even become very rebellious against you and lash out and do things that would have never happened if the two of you would just yeah. learn to talk, learn to communicate. The, another way people communicate in a wrong way is fighting. The fighter has to win. Their identity is controlled by whether they win or not. And they will keep saying it. They will, sometimes they can do it in a gruff way. They can come, they can come off harsh. They can even get abusive in their verbal language because they've got to prove they are right no matter what. And yep. you cannot win. And in their mind, what they're thinking is, I'm going to make you the loser that you are. And I am the winner in this altercation. And they will circle around and they will talk and they'll keep pushing. They are, they are the bulldozer. Okay. How many of you are fighters? Let's just be honest. Your spouse already knows it. If you won't confess <laughs> it, they're going to elbow you right now. So yes. Okay. You've got to make an extra effort to really listen to that yeah. person, to talk less and to listen more and be patient. Sometimes I would talk to Gary because I could be this fighter. I went from being the surrenderer and then when he didn't get it to let me prove to you, let me show you, let me tell you, you should respect, that you, I'm right. And so anyway, um, the, the, the way this can play out is that person will keep pushing and pushing and pushing and you feel like you're not heard. You feel like you're not listened to. And I've had to learn to do, I've had to learn to back off and learn to listen. If I don't listen, I keep pushing. I will ask a question and if he doesn't answer me in two seconds, then I ask it another way. I say it another way. I state it, I ask it. And the Holy Spirit began to show me, you're not giving him enough time to even process the question. So if you are the fighter, you've got to, ask a question and be quiet and wait and wait and let them process it and speak. If you keep talking, they have no opportunity to share how they feel and they have no courage to share how they feel because they're used to dealing with you. And they know <laughs> that if they say something, you're gonna attack and you're gonna go into fight mode. So you've got to prove to them that you are willing to listen. All the fighters say amen and their spouses say amen, <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.